okay, in 2014, about 70% of your sales were generated from North America and only 8% in the rest of the world. However, in the future, the forecast growth in the Asian market will be 30% and in the North America is only around 10%. So obviously, the Asian market will be an important target for, your future, pro for future development. But the question here is how to do it. Good afternoon, dear judges, ladies, and gentlemen. My name is Ling. They are my colleagues, Jenny, Merlin, and Irene. Today, under the vision to be the global leader in this industry, we have identified your key issue is how to turn up for the Asian market. And to address this concern, we have a recommend a color wrong strategy. That is to target the female group and start a recycling program in the existing South Korea market. And for the long-term market expansion, we choose China. And at last, with internal investment around 900 million US dollars, we believe that we can achieve NPV goal around 550 million US dollars. Okay, before I show you the details of our recommendations, let's see the situations now. In the last five years, power to sales have kept a stable growth in the last five years in Asia, especially in China. And in the future, the Asia Pacific will gain the highest market share among this industry around the world. So what will be the industry trend in the future? We can see that China will dominate the market and the DIY product will be more and more popular among the emerging, emerging country. Also, the product will be lighter and more convenient for customers to use. Okay, among this indus uh, potential industry, having, having uh, powerful brands, innovative products, and exception, exceptional people, also operation excellence, TTI become a world-class leader in designing, manufacturing, and marketing of the power equipment industry. So what TTI is spend more in the future? They want the Asia area uh, can be an important market for them in the last ten, in the next 10 years. So how to achieve this big goal? Our recommendation is that on the, uh, on the one hand, we can expand the presence among the existing markets such, such as South Korea. On the other hand, we can expand our business to the new uh, to emerging markets such as China in the future. So how to achieve their goals? The option one is to how uh, which existing market that we can maintain in Asia. As you can see from the chart, South Korea has gained the highest market of TTI sales in the Asia area uh, around uh, before the uh, in the last two years. Also nowadays, South Korea is the biggest market of TTI sales in Asia. Not last but not the least, the price annual disposable income of South Korea also, also will keep a stable growth in the next five years. So our recommendation is that we can enter the existing markets that uh, is Korea, is South Korea. What about the option two? Uh, is which emerging market that we can enter? Let's see the market market selections. The first, the first. The first criteria is the safety. Because the power to product safety and the regulatory compliance is a critical issue for manufacturers, which means that uh, the manufacturers and the host countries must provide the safe and standard uh, products for our customers. Next criteria is the technology support. If the, uh, if the host country and the manufacturer has basic technology uh, to support the uh, product development trends such as discover, define, design, and deliver. That uh, we, we, we can cut down some of the cost during the, during the uh, manufacturing process. Next criteria is the preference. Uh, because in different countries, different people have different preference. The market we enter must, uh, must be that. Uh, the customer like our products. Next criteria is the demand. Uh, the new market must has the uh, must has the market side and potential growth in the future. What about the last criteria is competitive landscape. The concentration and the numbers of competitors will affect the entry decision of TTI. After evaluating the criteria above, finally we, try st we choose China as our next market to enter. So how to be competitive in this market? 
<coughs> Let's see. After uh, evaluating the products and the marketplace of three competitors, three main competitors of TTIs, we recommend that TT, uh, TTI should uh, develop female products in the future and uh, also enter the China market. Let's welcome the details of our strategy. So how to capture the new market share in South Korea? Let's see the current situation in South Korea. Recently, the house demand is increasing, which leads more consumers to buy the home equipment related product in South Korea. And let's see the demographic changes in South Korea. From this chart, we can see that the population of the female has already existed, the population of male, in 2015. And this trend was forecasted to continue in the next 15 years. And with the increasing income of women now enjoying greater spending power, especially those in employment and age 24 to 54, uh, has made a large, powerful segment of the consumer market. Therefore, more and more women now are buying or influencing the purchase and use of DIY products. So we can conclude that the female market has great potential. So we suggest that TTI can choose the female market as the next market we can go forward. But how can we enter the female market? It's highly recommended that TTI can should extend its product line to produce the female product. Why? Because our main competitors don't have such female products in this market. And firstly, we will choose Real B as our brand because Real B target at the DIYs and the cost conscious professional users. And the other reason is that our target customers, female is more price sensitive than the of male. And what the female product should be? Firstly, the color must be more attractive to the female. Like you can use the pink color or the blue. And secondly, you must lose the product's weight. As you can see, I'm the strongest one uh, in our team, but it's still heavy for me to pick up the power tools. And last but not least, uh, the product must be, used, must be easy for the female to use. Do you uh, not think that, or would, would women be offended if you developed a product specifically for them? Uh, doesn't it send a, a statement that, you know, uh, um, men are stronger, the, 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 or, or would, would a female not have the perception that the, the tool designed for the male is more powerful, and they're saying, why should we have a less powerful product? Um, yeah, and to follow up on that, do you think it's politically correct for us to do this? So there is a change for female that they they are like to uh, spend more time in the DIY product. So we believe that the female uh, part, the female product, it will be uh, suitable for in this market. Okay. I think this may be personal though. Uh, would you do it yourself, or would you rather ask like your boyfriend to do it for you? <laughs> Actually, the the boyfriend can buy this product as a present for the girlfriend. <laughs> and then it's our second step in South Korea, our recycling program. Nowadays, everyone is going green. According to research, there are about 64% of people are trying to have a positive impact on the environment. And the South Koreans have greater preference on the environmentally friendly product. So, uh, we will, so that's why we put up with our recycling program to build up our public image. And firstly, we will choose the Real B as a pilot, and all of the Real B's product can be recycled in any retailer's store. And if the uh, customers want to buy a new product, uh, these customers can get a discount. Okay, China is very attractive, that is true, but on the other side, China is quite challenging as well. Because during the past years, some of your competitors have tried to enter this market, but they failed. So one of the reasons we have any the following three reasons is about the first one is about entry mode. For the China market, uh, the right and 
appropriate intro mode can help you to reduce the business uh, barriers in this market. And the second one is about China is so big with so many people here, which means that the products and customer seg segmentation can be quite diversified. And finally, the most important one is that nowadays we lack of DIY culture. So if you target the in, uh, individual customers groups in China, it's not, that, that's not a good choice. Based on these fights, we suggest a joint venture a uh, joint venture with the Jinding Group. So how does this joint venture make sense? First, let's stand uh, the point view of D TDI. Um, what can we get from this joint venture? Number one is the extensive distribution network in China because Jinding Group has already covered almost half of the middle and big cities in China. And what's more is that we can add value to this market. Uh, based, you can see that Jinding's business covers electronic tours and also the hotels and the real estate development. So which we can see that our products are highly, demand, uh, highly demanded in this market. And number three is that the joint venture business models can help us reduce the uh, uh, business uh, barriers like the environmental limitations. So, and finally, uh, is that we can reduce our costs by resources integration, such as the logistics phase, the manufacturing phase, and also the labor cost. And now let's turn to another side, standing in the view of the Jinding Group, what can we offer to this company? Well, first, Jinding Group nowadays is facing fierce competition in the China market because uh, half of the top 10 leaders in this industry in China nowadays occupied by the foreign companies. So by coupling with us, it can increase its own competitiveness. What's more, Jinding Group nowadays is trying to glo uh, expand into the global market as well. And as a leading uh, global leader, we can offer our advanced technologies, the management skills, and also the experiences we have for its future plan. Okay, now next we can see what can we do specifically in this market. First is about product segment. Well, in China, we will have the uh, set up the R&D to take the Chinese people's specific requirements into consideration, and finally to integrate the two companies' product portfolios. And the next is about customer seg seg segment. Nowadays, as the DIY culture is not mature enough, so we still focus on the business level, which means that our target group will mainly concentrate on the industry and professional users in the first stage uh, about our China expansion strategy. Next is about marketing plan in this market, where we suggest sponsoring the Dreams Transformers in China, which is very quite popular uh, household decoration uh, TV programs in China. It has a very wide audience in China. And based on this practice, this is the first stage in China. We have already entered in, enter in, into this market, and we have already have a lot of market share. So, but the next stage, uh, that will be by the 2022, when the DIY culture has become more and more mature in China, especially during the young generations, and also because China's special one about the borrowing culture. So what is a borrowing culture? Actually, according to our analysis and our own uh, experiences, in China, we are more likely to borrow the expensive uh, tools, which are less frequently used at our homes instead of buying a set of companies ones. So based on these fights, we suggest to catch the sharing economy trend in China. That is to uh, set up a true library story in Hangzhou. So what does this library story do? First, we'll sell our products, and such as the hand tools, which are now expensive expensive, the cu most customers can offer it. But for the expensive one, and especially which are less uh, frequently used one, like the power tools, uh, products uh, customers can borrow from our shop. And for the services, in our store, we can also teach them how to use this store specifically. And also, if you have tools which are not going to be used at your home, we offer a platform to resell your, to resell your tools in, uh, in our stores. And finally, overview, our strategy in China will co uh, cover two stages. The first stages will cover to the business level, and in the future, as the DIY culture become more uh, mature, we will go deeper into the customer segment. And with our strategy, we believe that uh, in the future, we can have the development of the DIY culture and increase our revenues as well. 
Okay, now that we've tackled into the Korean and Chinese market, let's see how we implement our business. By 2016, we are going to launch our new female products in Korean markets, which is targeted specifically to the female group. And at the same time, we will be doing our recycling, recycling plan just in order to attract more and more consumers to buy our products and then have the chance to become our royal customers. After three years, we will be doing the B2B business by 2020. 2020, we will be doing our B2B business through joint venture model. And by the fourth year of 2021, we are going to do our B2C plan as well as open our new store in China. So we strongly believe that our, our project is feasible and profitable in the future. So how, how does it happen? Let's see this chart. We, uh, we, uh, we clearly identify that the sales revenue of TTI Group is, for, uh, is forecasted to increasing in the next, next few years. And at, by 2022, this Kager will achieve by around 14%, and also for the EBIT, it's also achieved by 18%. Now, what does this Kager actually mean? We've identified some key re revenue drivers, and the first one is the incremental purchasing of our customers, since we've already have more and more innovative products for our customers. And the second factor is the repeated, repeated purchasing of the customers, since we have already launched our recycling plan that will engage more and more consumers to buy our products and then have the chance to become our loyal customers. And last but not least, that is due to, due to the new customers that we can gain from the Korean market, China, Chinese market and even the world wow. So compared to the profitable project and the revenue that we can bring to your company, the total investment is only cost about 900 million US dollars, which is including our pink plan, green plan, and also the red plan in China. So, ladies and gentlemen, today we mainly walk you into our color run strategy, which is including three steps. The first step, pink, pink plan, that is mainly targeted to the female market. We'll, uh, we'll attract more and more females. And for the next step, we'll, we will be, uh, do our recycling plan. And the third step, we will, we will do the market expansion in China and also to gain more markets, more, more markets from China. So we believe that by doing this, we are going to let your company can become the leader in Asia market market by keeping the core competencies and innovation. So this is all our presentation today. Thank you for your time. Do you have any questions? What do you think is the bigger priority, DIY or uh, professional, industrial? In the female market, uh, we, will uh, we will target at the DIY products. Uh, in the China market, as we have uh, as already said that, in the first stage, the DIY culture is not mature enough in China, so we were emphasized on the industry level because now China's economy is still, on the, uh, in, is still increasing a lot. But in the future, uh, that is by the 2020, after the 2022, the DIY culture becomes more gener uh, mature in the young generations, we were emphasized, we are target this group. So the, part of the reason why I asked that question was because um, if you feel that the professional market is yeah. uh, more developed than the DIY market, yes. if the DIY market is not well developed, um, then the female DIY market must be even less developed because the DIY market is obviously very broadly focused, but if you're going to target a specific group within the DIY market, then you're even more focused. Um, yes. That's why I asked uh, as to what you felt was the priority industrial versus uh, oh, yes. DIY. A question here. Uh, in in your presentation here, you said that the total investment is nine hundred eighty three million. So that would be the investment for for doing the paint project, the green project, or the red project. Yes. Uh, I I I need to know how much for this lady ladies product, the the, the female product, okay, and okay. the the R and D cost for it, and okay. if we were to to invest into it. Uh, what would it fail? So how, how do you back it up? Before the board would approve on spending money into investing on development of the ladies' product, the female product, I, I need to know for sure that there is a big demand for it. So how do you convince me there would be such a demand? Actually, we couldn't find the specific data, but uh, we found that there is a trend that more and more females would like to spend the time in DIY products. But 
but how do you support it? You, you cannot just say because the demographic that the, the, the female population is uh, growing up and is even more than the male, then there would be a demand for female products. So for that matter, uh, people are getting aged. And also, shouldn't we develop another product for the, for the elderly? Good idea. You, you have to convince me, you have to give me some, 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 some facts, you know, some findings to back up. Yes, we have to invest into it, and yes, there is a demand for it. Uh, we've, we have do the uh, research that the income of the female in South Korea is increasing. So I believe that uh, the female in South Korea and can afford and has uh, uh, interest in our female product. Okay, well, add something. Well, speaking of my personal experience, if I want to do something, especially uh, repairing the garden uh, uh, on my own, I would I would like to use the the uh, tools for lighter, uh, not. Not too too uh, too heavy, you know, because uh, it's hard for me to handle it. Uh, if I want the core, if I will, uh, uh, if I can do it by myself, usually I believe that a lot of women they will, will not call the, the their husband or their boyfriend since that the it, this is actually is a popular trend in the future for the women. They they wanted to develop their products or want to DIY their house by themselves. disposable income. Wouldn't you just pick up a phone, get a contractor to do it for you? Okay, so uh, uh, I want I will still take this question. Uh, it's basically like the based on the research that research uh, search on the on the uh, internet or uh, speaking from our personal experience when we when we uh, observe people we identify there is uh, is existing this trend that women will prefer to do something by themselves uh, rather than rather than just ask someone to do it. Yeah. Um, switch gear a little bit, you know. Forget about the pink thing. So <laughs> on, on the joint venture, it's easy to say, oh, we form a joint venture. Because joint venture is just like a marriage. It's so easy to get married. But if it doesn't work out, it will be very messy yes. you know, doing the divorce. So uh, how, do, how do we mitigate that? And, and, and what sort of criteria or conditions we should be looking if we are to set up a joint venture, yeah, be it in Korea or be it in China? Well, yes, joint venture is quite easy because, uh, but I think that we may meet a lot of questions after the joint venture with the Jinding Group, for example, the ex cultural management problems, and also the integration of the two companies' resources. But I think that because uh, uh, the business, uh, because the two companies are quite complementary to each other, and especially for our business, uh, pr for our products are highly uh, demanded. Uh, for his business in China. So I think that uh, in the future, we can work out this problem. And especially for your, for TDI's own experiences of after the acquisition strategy of all these years, I think that that's not a big problem. And you can solve it in the future by. Yeah, but, but, but. Yes. Yeah, it's, we acquire the company, so we control the management. Yeah. But if we are looking at a joint manager, I would imagine that you are referring to a 50 50 one. Yes. So we, no one has the final say about that. So that will make it difficult. Unless you're referring to a strategic partnership uh, where you partner up with Jinding okay. and work with them, yes. but not a joint venture in the sense that uh, we're both making a 50-50% investment in, into something where nobody owns it and nobody really wants to assume the responsibility, right? Okay. Because I, I, which, one do you, which one do you mean? Do you mean a strategic partnership or do you mean a joint venture? Because uh, they're different. Actually, uh, uh, the joint venture here, uh, what I want is to, your company can, li can own this company, uh, by which means you can uh, have, you have a choice for your management skills, for your future strategy plans. Uh, so maybe if, if uh, I don't want it to be 50-50%. Yes. 
Yeah, for this question, why we choose joint venture is mainly because that in China the government regulations is very uh, is very serious. So we see that the, for the for the joint venture plan that we can uh, make use of Dingding Group's resources that will help you your company to expand market in China and then to uh, make use of their sales channels. Yeah. Uh, okay, I want to pick on a point in this slide that you mentioned the fa one of the reasons for the competitors to fail is a lack of DIY culture. Uh, throughout the presentation, I still don't see uh, what's your plan or what's, uh, what's a strong reason for you to believe that you can turn around this uh, um, lack of DIY culture uh, failure reason. Well, based on the failure experiences of some of your competitors in the past year, uh, when your competitors enter into China market, they focus on the individual targets in China. But uh, at the present time, China has not, uh, China, the DIY culture is not mature uh, in this market. So what we can draw the experiences from, from this is that we need to uh, we need to reconsider our target group in this China market. So that's why I said that in the first stage, we emphasize on, emphasize on the business level, not the individual, because the market is not mature enough. Um, I have one question. Uh, on the two library, have you ever considered the potential risk of um, setting up a two library in China whereby it's so big? There could be potential risks of um, people yes. borrowing it and the risk of not returning it and you won't be able to even track track down and eventually leading to a provisions or whatsoever. So this kind of risk, any 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 thought process on how to address this issue? Yes, they do have the credit uh, risk in this tour library, but uh, we we have uh, we have plans for it. Uh, for example, on the first the on the first stage, we will um, for example the deposit. We will use the deposit system uh, to ensure that the customers uh, a customer will be the customer will be more willing to uh, return our per, our tools instead of just uh, owing to themselves. And the next we we will go for of course the legal systems because. Uh, when you do business in uh, when you do business, uh, you need to f you need the support from the legal system. So uh, I think uh, we can solve this problem by the two ways: the risk. Any reason for the two library in Hangzhou? Yes. Any reason for that? Ah, yes. Uh, about the selection of the location, we have considered several criteria. For example, the first is the cost uh, about the price about the housing prices, and Hangzhou is better than other cities. For example, Shanghai or Guangzhou. And the next criteria will be the pace of life. Is uh, are people here willing to decorate their homes uh, than uh, than people uh, on other on other places? And the third uh, criteria will be the uh, will be the density of the young generations because uh, after the 2022, the young generations are still the main target for this DIY culture. Uh, so based on this, we believe that Hangzhou will be a better choice for us to uh, set up the first uh, test point door. About this question, as you can see for our long-term strategy, that is, Hangzhou is not the only place that we are uh, if we are uh, inten uh, planning to enter into. In. So uh, for the long-term strategies, if the, the, this entry mode is successful, it specifically is uh, good for our consumers, we, will pl we are planning to expand to the other cities as well. How do you communicate? How do you let people know that you have a tool library there? Hangzhou is a big place. How do you communicate? How much do you want to spend on communicating that? For the tour library, the first is about our innovation because in China there is no such a store like this. And uh, uh, besides, we have already have our marketing plan in China. Um, uh, the the sponsorship with the popular TV programs in China, so the advertisement can also be put on this TV program for our special stores in China. And uh, yeah, I think that. that that's, yes. Actually, it's a, a, a lot of ways. For example, in China, the social media is very popular. Uh, for example, the WeChat and also the uh, uh, Weibo. So we may use this to, uh, use this social platform to, pr uh, to promote our products. Yes. It has a lot of ways to do that, it, uh, except for this dream transformer. If you uh, were to launch a pink line of tools, 
uh, how would you um, how would you market this? We do consider about this question. Uh, firstly, we will use the social media, and we found that SNS and like Facebook, this social media is popular in in the South Korea. So we will use this social media to market it, to do our female product marketing. Okay, thank you, Team Three.